Hello everyone, this is Jumbo Commander and Aether Revolt is out. The cards are there. Let's go through a review and find out what cards belong in your commander decks. If you're interested in the legendaries of Aether Revolt, go ahead and click here and I will take you to my legendaries video. But now on to the cards. Now I mentioned all the legendaries, they do all have namesake sorceries. SRAM's expertise is two white white and it creates some servos, whatever, but it lets you cast a card with CMC three or less from your hand. And they all have this ability to cast a card of a certain mana cost for free from your hand. Some obvious broken things are using stuff like, I don't know, restore balance. <laughs> balance is banned in Commander, but we can restore balance. Uh, I know that creating three Coalesce Servo Tokens and then casting balance doesn't work very well, but the power is there. I mean, if we're talking about power, how about just Ancestral Recall? Just <laughs> put some Servos into play and then draw three cards. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, but each one of those legendary creatures has their own expertise. Baral's expertise bounces guys and cast a card for CMC4 or less. Uh, Yehenny's is sort of a weak languish. Uh, Kerry Zev's is a threatened effect. And Rushkar's expertise is very strong. Of course, the one with the highest mana cost in Commander is the strongest. But it lets you draw cards. And then after you draw the cards, you can play something 5 CMC or less for free. So uh, there's some ground to be broken here with these expertise, so try and fit them in your decks and see what you can do. Felidar Guardian is a super popular kitty cat, not just because he's got neon blue horns, but because he goes infinite with Sahili Rai, making tons and tons of cats in standard, destroying your opponent. But he can fit in your commander deck as well. He also combos with Kiki Jiki because the cat exiles and then brings it back to the battlefield. So he works with Sahili, works with Kiki, does not work with Splinter Twin. Um, other things that are similar are Village Bell Ringer, working with Kiki, not with Sahili, but working with Splinter Twin. Uh, and then Restoration Angel, which works with Kiki only and not with Sahili or Splinter Twin. Wow, there's just like, you can just throw all of these cards in a Jeskai deck and just like do mix and match combo. All right, sounds, sounds okay. Exquisite Archangel has a very powerful replacement effect. If you were to lose the game instead, Exile the Angel, your life total becomes your starting life total. 40 if we're playing Commander. Uh, I don't know if uh, that's good. I think I might rather play a Resolute Archangel. I mean, it has better synergy with flickering, um, and you get the life immediately. I mean, Exquisite Archangel does have some added benefits. It can save you for a single draw step if you're decked. Eh, eh. Uh, it doesn't work against commander damage or tokens. I don't know, if you're looking for an angel that saves your life, why not Platinum Angel? It just seems better. Call for Unity is an anthem effect that can be very powerful, but it's really, really slow. It gives you counters at the end of each turn. Uh, I mean, compare that to Dictate of Heliod, which has never been a stellar card, and it takes Call of Unity a little while to just reach Dictate's plus two, plus two. I think that there's a lot more powerful cards out there if you're looking to pump up your team. How about Marshall's Anthem, which can give your creatures plus one plus one, but then also bring things back to the battlefield. Ah. Or, I mean, if we're trying to put a ton of counters on stuff, go crazy for five mana. Cathar's Crusade has got to be it. This just makes your creatures gigantic and you don't have any hoops to jump through. Consulate Crackdown is a huge mass artifact removal in white. Think of Vandal Blast, but it does lose some value when they destroy your Consulate Crackdown and everyone gets their artifacts back. Blah. Well, maybe you can just shut out your opponent with your Microsynth Lattice, removing all of their lands as well. That sounds... <laughs> sounds pretty good. So Quicksmith Spy basically says, Hey, friend artifact, you have tap draw card. And we can also keep in the back of our heads Quicksmith Rebel, which says uh, Artifact deals two damage to target creature or player. But let's focus on the Spy because, well, we want to draw cards. So if we put it on this Staff of Domination, it says one draw card. Ooh, ooh. 
Let's keep going. How about Basalt Monolith? Three draw card. By the way, I'd include those cards in my deck no matter what. It's not like I'm taking a disadvantage for having a Basalt Monolith in my deck. I mean, come on. What else we got? Uh, Clock of Omens, tap some artifacts, draw some cards. How about Filigree Sages? Uh, two and a blue, draw a card. Uh, soul it taunt, soul soul taunt this thing with the weird art and stuff like that blue draw card uh how about voltaic construct to draw a card uh pilly paula oh two for the first one then use the mana to untap it again draw a card man i'm loving pilly paula and all this other stuff draw scorpion things die draw a card and quick smith spy replaces itself so easily in an artifact deck and goes crazy with so many cards uh i have a feeling that we're going to be drawing a lot of cards guys Skyship Plunder is a flying human pirate, and he can add a counter to a permanent or player. Kind of like a thrumming bird, but proliferate is definitely more powerful. Uh, I think this guy is going to find a spot in a deck that you think thrumming bird would go well in, or also Edric Spymaster decks that, you know, maybe need to play around with some counters, get in for some damage, be small, evasive, very good role player. Trophy Mage. When Trophy Mage enters, ah, when it enters the battlefield, you get to get a CMC3, and they're scrolling Metal Worker, Mer Galvanizer, Olivian Stone, Proteus Staff, Rings of Bright Earth, Staff of Domination, Swords, all the swords, Temple Bell, Umbral Mantle. I mean, the combos that can go with Trophy Mage are just crazy. Uh, some of the ones you might have missed is Basalt Monolith, Blasting Station. These are many of the combo centric cards in the format. And so if you find that you have a combo that kind of based around artifacts, uh, CMC3, and by the way, there's tons of mana rocks out there for CMC3 as well. Trophy Mage becomes a 2-2 for three mana that says draw the exact combo piece you need. Uh, that sounds really good. Efficient construction makes thopters when you cast artifact spells. Oh my gosh, my Brea Thopter deck! It gets an enchantment that makes more Thopters! And you cast tons of artifacts. Whir of Invention is X blue 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 for an improvising instant that says search your library for an artifact with converter mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. This reminds me of Court of Calling. Court of Calling has Convoke, which is better than Improvise. You can pay for the green with Convoke. You're always going to end up paying that blue, blue, blue with War of Invention. Uh, and creatures might be a little bit more relevant, but I don't know. People want artifacts straight on the battlefield. It kind of reminds me of Reshape. You jump through a few hoops, you get the artifact you need onto the battlefield. There are going to be a lot of decks that really want War of Invention. It kind of also reminds me of uh, Wargate. Wargate's a little bit harder to cast, doesn't have Improvise, has some Bant colors in there, um, but you get what you want and you get it onto the battlefield and that's really important in a lot of Commander decks. Disallow says, nope. One blue blue, counter target spell, activated ability or triggered ability. This is basically exactly a Void Slime, but just better. It's a one instead of a green. And Void Slime has been a mainstay in many Simic decks. It's very powerful to have the flexibility of countering an activated ability or triggered ability. I think a lot of people are going to get pretty excited about this. Uh, being able to counter a Planeswalker on the battlefield or a powerful commander trigger or, you know, maybe you're blinking something crazy and you want to be like, ah, no. Okay, Disallow can do a lot of really great and flexible things, and it's going to give us a more intimate understanding of Commander. I'm really excited that this card is going to be highly available in the format. Mechanized Production has got to be one of my favorite cards from the set. Basically, you enchant an artifact and it just spits out copies during your upkeep. It has a cool clause that if you control eight or more artifacts of the same name, you win the game. It's hard to get artifacts with the same name, but there are a few tricks we can pull. But I'm just excited about a new copy every single turn. I would pay four mana to get a Solemn Simulacrum every turn. Heck, I'd pay four mana to copy a Seed of the Synod every turn. Or a, an Acre Wellspring. And those are just on like the bottom end. Just imagine some of the insane cards that you can copy in Commander and just keep spitting things out. I mean, just imagine if you were to copy a Tamiyo's journal. 
Uh, well, that wouldn't go so well because it's a legendary artifact. Uh, the reason why I have Tamiyo's journal in there is because it spits out clues, and if you get eight clues, you can just win the game. You can go clue heavy with mechanized production and just win. Or you can go thopter heavy and just win the game. Remember, this mechanized production just has to be on the battlefield. It can be enchanting Inic or Willspring drawing you cards, and if you have eight thopters, you win the game. How about a Mer Battle Sphere? This is what I want, is just you enchant a Mer Battle Sphere with mechanized production. Next turn, you put out a new Mer Battle Sphere. You have eight colorless Mer artifact tokens. You win the game. It's just immediately, it's just crazy. Uh, or something like Microsynth Lattice, where you just have eight islands that are artifacts and you win the game. Uh, mechanized production is great, it's interesting, it's got a win the game clause, it's got value on it. I'm very excited to see this in a lot of Commander games. Herald of Anguish is a gigantic demon that you might be able to cheat out a little bit faster with some artifacts. Most importantly, at the beginning of your end step, each opponent discards a card, it just punishes your opponents and they will all hate you so much. I mean, you can also like pick off a few creatures here and there, but it's that discard. Oh my gosh, it reminds me of Nath of the Guilt Leaf, which I had for a little while um, and then I didn't have any friends, so I took the deck apart. Fatal Push is going to be really powerful in a lot of constructed formats, but not so much in Commander. I think it's going to be excellent in 1v1 competitive Commander where you really need to play low to the ground, but in multiplayer format, we have creatures with CMC more than four. I mean, come on, that's where things really get going. <laughs> I don't see very many people playing Fatal Push. It kind of reminds me of Tragic Slip. It's you have to jump through a few hoops just to get a kill spell? No, I can pay two or three and be just fine. Sly Requisitioner is just a value. You can improvise her out a little bit faster and then she just generates servos as you throw things into the graveyard. Heck, think of the Brea deck where you're constantly sacrificing things like Icker Well Springs and then you start generating servos so you can sacrifice those. Heck, if you are Nim Death Mantle comboing, this can help facilitate that. You could even go Sword of the Meek with a sack outlet like Kirk Clan Ironworks. You can generate infinite mana by sacrificing the Sword of the Meek. Sly Requisitioner puts a servo onto the battlefield, you get the Sword of the Meek back. Amazing. Doretti Scrap Savant is going to be throwing artifacts into the graveyard and getting things back. Heck, Goblin Welder can do that every turn and generate a servo because of it. Uh, the artifact synergies are awesome. Sly Requisitioner is going to slot into a lot of different crazy artifact shenanigan decks. Pia's Revolution reminds me of Athreos God of Passage, but for artifacts. And I really loved Athreos. I have a commander deck that features him right now. And it's really fun to be able to target your opponent and be like, you, will you pay three life? And sometimes they're your friend and they'll be like, nah, take the artifact back. And sometimes they'll be your enemy and they'll just quietly take nine damage or something like that. Uh, I don't think it's the most powerful enchantment out there for artifacts, but it's certainly fun. I can imagine it in, a, it in a Doretti deck where you're sacrificing things all over the place. Heck, that Icker Wellspring that I keep mentioning, you do not want the person to get that back, so it just throws an extra three damage around. Uh, I think this is a very interesting political card, but it won't end up in the top tuned lists. Indomitable Creativity. I'm going to explain this one a little bit because it's a complicated effect. X, red, 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 you basically get to destroy uh, whatever you want for X. So if you pay three for X, you get to destroy three things. And then you go through your library and you find the next three either artifacts or creatures. And those will go onto the battlefield instead. So if you destroy something of your opponents, well, they're going to trade it in for whatever artifact or creature is on top of their library first. But then again, you can do it to yourself and trade up something. It's like a weird polymorph uh, where maybe you can get rid of something you don't want and hopefully get something really big and crazy. Uh, it also feels a little bit like a chaos warp. You might want to get rid of something important and then just hope they don't get anything good off of it. Uh, 
I, one of my favorite effects is Proteus Staff, and I love the ability to trade into something. In fact, you can use stuff like Creature Lands. You activate your Creature Land, and then your deck is stacked with Eldrazi or Blightsteel Colossus or something like that. Uh, you can Proteus Staff the Mishra's Factory away, get a Blightsteel Colossus. You can Indomitable Creativity a few tokens you created with a Sorcery and go straight to your Eldrazi. Uh, so there's a lot of cool ways we can manipulate this card. Uh, but one thing that's a little bit rough about Indomitable Creativity is that it hits the first artifact or enchantment. So you could go to all this trouble casting your great big spell, uh, activating your Mistress Factory, hoping you get a Blightsteel Colossus, and instead just getting a Soul Ring. Ugh, I mean, there's more freedom when stacking your deck with creatures, but I think Indomitable Creativity is still very interesting and has some synergies that'll fit in a lot of decks. Speaking of Indomitable Creativity and Carrie Zev's expertise, what? What am I doing? These belong in an awesome deck and I've decided to resurrect it. My Zadahedron Grinder deck. Uh, Indomitable Creativity, if it targets one thing, you can copy it over and over again and trade up all of your Zada tokens, your Goblin tokens for Zada, and then trade them into permanents? Or Karizev's Expertise, you can target your Zada and then you can cast a card with converted mana cost two or less from your hand for each creature you control? Uh, these cards are great and the past sets have been really great for Zada including Invigorated Rampage allowing you to go crazy so I'm making a Zada deck uh, it's gonna be coming out real soon if you're not watching this immediately you can click here and it will take you to my Zada deck tech otherwise you're gonna have to wait a week or two to see what I'm gonna put together for this deck tech Malfist Revolutionary is an amazing uncommon, guys. It's kind of pushed. One green green for a 3-3 three, three trample. Had to throw trample on there. When it enters the battlefield or dies, it does it twice. Basically, you can, for each kind of counter on target permanent or player, give that permanent or player another kind a counter of that kind. It just doubles. So, and it goes with players too. Not just opponents, but players. You can give yourself extra expertise and energy, I guess. Uh, you can give them extra poison counters. You can double up the counters on something. It's target permanent. This can target planeswalkers. What is going on? I thought Deep Lego Skate was crazy, but that was just in a commander set. This is a three mana, three, three trample. I mean, and it has an enters and dies effect. Uh, it's just, these doubling season effects are getting crazy, and Planeswalkers are going to be out of control in Commander. Just beware. Um, this is so much better than Gilder Baron, where you have to jump through a bunch of hoops. Malthus Revolutionary, you just have to play him, and he's broken. She's broken. I mean, she's freaking awesome. She's got, like, one of those Halo sword things. Anyway. Ridge Scale Tusker is another uncommon. What is going on with this set in Limited? Plus, he's a super scary armadillo, which is actually kind of cute. But he does a crazy impression of a Verdurous Gear Hulk. He puts a counter on every other creature. You just have to have a few creatures to have this guy be crazy. I mean, it, it's kind of like a Primeval Protector. We've gotten a lot of this effect recently, but it's incredibly powerful, and we should not overlook this card because it's just as power as a Verger's Gear Hulk. But it's an uncommon, and it's probably gonna be like lying around in draft chaff. Pick it up, throw it in your counter deck. It's gonna be awesome. Heroic Intervention makes permanents you control hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Reminds me of Boros Charm making your lands indestructible so you can blow up theirs. <laughs> no. A uh, Rootborn Defenses. Creatures you control are indestructible. I think Heroic Intervention is going to have some sneaky, sneaky ways of messing with your opponents, uh, but could find its way into a lot of decks. Aid from the Cowl will take a permanent you control and put it straight onto the battlefield every turn you can trigger Revolt. I mean, if you got a permanent heavy deck, uh, you can get a lot of value off of this. I'm thinking that this belongs in these Primal Surge decks, these Lurking Predators decks. Although I think I like Lurking Predators in Primal Surge better. Lurking Predators triggers all the time, 
Primal Surge just wins the game? I don't know, but Aid from the Cowl can still be very powerful, and especially if you can trigger that revolt over and over again. I think you really need to find a way to trigger that revolt. I'm thinking Awakening Zone or From Beyond, you know, those little Drazi Scions that you can sacrifice, fetch lands, things like that, so that you can get revolt every single time and get more and more things, boom, onto the battlefield. Life Crafter's Bestiary is the exact effect we need in green. For three, you can scry at the beginning of your upkeep. Hey, Thassa, how's it going? And whenever you cast a creature spell, you can pay green. And if you do, draw a card. Ooh, you're adding one green to every creature you play, and you're just drawing a card? I love it. Uh, green has to, you know, mess around a little bit to get some card draw going. I'm thinking like Drum Hunters or Idol on a Blossoms for Enchantments, Garrick's Pack Leader, a Tireless Tracker. I mean, a lot of these are kind of awkward card draw, but Lifecrafter's Beast Cherry, where you just play a creature and pay a green, boom, you got a card. I'm going to put this in a lot of our creature decks. Ooh, maybe Elves? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Walking Ballista is making a lot of waves in a lot of formats. It's really powerful because it's like Triskillian, but better. Uh, this thing goes infinite with Micaeus, and so you're going to see it a lot in Commander. It might be a must kill. Also, if you have infinite mana, it is the thing that does the infinite killing. You just pull all the mana into Walking Ballista at instant speed and just boom, 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 shoot everything. So this is a very dangerous card. <laughs> Let's be aware of it. Scrap Trawler. Basically, whenever something dies, you get to get something back. I mean, it's like a Mer Retriever and a Junk Diver, but just better. It turns everything into these great creatures. And I've been talking about these artifact strategies where you put stuff in the graveyard. Brea and Dreddy and even Goblin Welder. All of them are just going to be dumping stuff in the graveyard. Scrap Trawler is going to be getting stuff back. It's going to just create these crazy cycles of in and out and in and out, gaining value all of the time. This set has been amazing. And to combo with all of this, how about a Treasure Keeper? This guy, when he dies, will just peel stuff off the top of your library and cast something CMC 3 or less. I mean, it's just great. The value of recurring this guy is going to be insane. So I'm just looking forward to throwing these artifacts together in all of these different, very synergistic decks. Metallic Mimic is a tribal powerhouse, a shapeshifter. You can choose any creature type, and it gives those creatures plus one, plus one counters. Plus, it's a two, one for two. This is going to slot right into many goblin builds, elf builds, sliver builds, uh, any sort of deck that wants to be low to the ground, tribal, beat down, merfolk. I mean, there's so many places where you can, oh my gosh, the fungus deck. I mean, think about it. Anything that works with plus one, plus one counters, I'm immediately thinking of Adaptive Automaton, and that is a great card in many, many tribal decks. Uh, oh my gosh, Thopters, Murs, so many different types of strategies that this Metallic Mimic can, pl can play in. It's just great. Uh, I'm immediately thinking of Rishkar, because, you know, it's an elf that interacts with plus one plus one counters, and then Metallic Mimic is around, and it does plus one plus one counter stuff too, and it all kind of works together. And also, I'm selfish, because I have uh, an elf deck that uses, you know, plus one plus one counters and low to the ground stuff and is very aggressive, and oh my gosh, I can put counters immediately on my Gyre Sage? Uh, I can't lose. Crackdown Construct can just win the game sometimes. Uh, it reminds me of Wake Thrasher, and it uses some of the same combos. Everyone's talking about the combo of Wandering Fumeral and Standard. You activate the Fumeral, you flip it back and forth, the Construct gets infinitely large. Um, but one of the classic ways to enable this is with Basalt Monolith, and that's what combos with the Wake Thrasher. So it's kind of like if you have enough of these synergies in there, then you can just have a second Wake Thrasher to just BOOM win the game if uh, your opponent doesn't have its defenses up. Ooh, I forgot. Lightning Greaves work too. If you have two creatures, you can just move the Lightning Greaves back and forth for the Crackdown Construct. Oh, this guy is so much easier uh, to enable the plus one plus one shenanigans than Wake Thrasher. Uh, I think he's going to be very dangerous. Universal Solvent is worth a mention. It costs one. We can get it with a Trinket Mage. And it destroys a permanent. I mean... 
it's not as good as Unstable Obelisk, I think. You need to have your artifacts doing something. Come on, guys. Um, but it reminds me a little bit of Brittle Effigy, which I've run before. I mean, I need to exile something. I'm in mono green. I need to play this Brittle Effigy. Um, but we've gotten a few tools that are really similar to this. Not to mention the Obelisk, but also Scour from Existence or Spine of Ishsaw. I mean, all of these are very inefficient in terms of mana cost. But sometimes you're okay with some inefficiency if you're in mono black and you need to kill an enchantment. Inspiring Statuary is a very interesting mana rock, and that's what it is. It's a mana rock for Narn artifact spells, allowing you to tap the statuary and produce a mana. It has the added benefit of letting your other useless artifacts, think maybe clues or servos or thopters, cast your non-artifact spells. But it's kind of at odds with itself. You want a lot of artifacts to be able to cast big things, but your big things can't be artifacts because you can't improvise them. Hmm, interesting. Uh, this could fit in really well with a deck that produces artifacts but doesn't cast artifacts, like Whirler Rogues or PN Cure Nalars. Uh, they are non-artifact spells, but they produce these Thopters that can help you cast things of higher and higher value. Uh, I can also think of a card like Reshape, which can let you get out one of those big artifacts that you can't improvise with, uh, while, you know, helping use a lot of that artifact synergy. Planner Bridge is very reasonably cost. Um, eight tap, search your library for a permanent card and put it on the battlefield. Uh, it's just a reasonable 14 mana for your first card onto the battlefield. That's it. And then 22 after that. I mean, come on, it's not bad at all. Uh, it reminds me of Planner Portal, which gets something into your hand. Uh, Planner Bridge does get it on the library, but it only really works for permanence. It kind of reminds me of Wargate, where if you really want to drop something huge, you can. But, I mean, come on, it's, it's costing you a lot of mana, a lot of tempo. Uh, I think you need to get something big, like a Blightsteel Colossus. And a Blightsteel Colossus, by the way, the, the first mana cost is going to be 14. So, you're already paying more mana. It's being able to use it multiple times, but you already have a Blightsteel. Do you really need to use your Planner Bridge multiple times? Eh. Um, I guess you can pay in installments too. I mean, I'd also want to get Omniscience or something crazy like that, uh, or a World Spine Worm. Heck, how about just a Paradox Engine? How about this is just another tutor for your Paradox Engine because that's how powerful this legendary artifact is, and it's coming up next. Paradox Engine so powerful. If you want to see it in my Send Triplets deck, you can go ahead and click here and it'll take you over to me ranting and raving about it a second time. Basically makes all of your spells cost less equal to the amount of mana rocks you have. I mean, just imagine if you have elves or anything. Just imagine the soul ring. It makes everything cost two less because you just tap the soul ring and the paradox engine untaps it. Everything is two less just for having a soul ring. Having a mana elf just makes everything one less. I mean, this card is insane, and it doesn't ask too much of us. We're already putting soul rings in our deck. We're already having tons of mana ramp. Paradox Engine goes infinite with so many cards. It facilitates Storm. It, it's going to fit in a lot of decks. It's going to be pretty broken. Uh, we might just want to start running more and more Crows and Grips in our life. Spire of Industry deserves a mention because it's a land that can help you fix mana in a lot of your artifact-based commander decks. Again, think Brea. I can't stop talking about her. Uh, you can add a colorless to your mana pool, but if you have an artifact, which you probably will, you can pay a life and get whatever color of mana you want. I mean, if your deck wants a Glimmer Void, then this is kind of a safer Glimmer Void. Tezzeret the Schemer is not that great. Um, you can ramp with him by creating a little Ethereum cell. Uh, you can kill something, and the seven is, well, not even that great anyways. Uh, the other two Tezzerets are way better. I mean, Tezzeret the Seeker is insane. Untap two target artifacts, search your library for an artifact, amazing. Even Tezzeret Agent Abolus has the ability to maybe draw a card. I don't know, I'm not going to be playing this for mana Tezzeret. I'm going to be playing these old Tezzerets. In fact, the other Tezzeret might be better. Tezzeret Master of Metal from the dual deck at least draws a card. You can plus it to reveal cards until you get an artifact card and draw that card. That's at least something. 
uh, in the uh, the minus loses life equal to the number of artifacts you control. That's the minus four on this Tesseret Agent of Bolas. I mean, minus four is a pretty powerful ability. I mean, and you could have a lot of artifacts. I don't know. I'm not really impressed by Tesseret. A Johnny unyielding. He looks pretty majestic there. Uh, six mana Planeswalker. We don't care about six mana Planeswalkers. We love them. Uh, plus two, reveal the top three cards of your library. You can put all non-land permanents into your hand. Ooh. And then the minus two is a Swords to Plowshares. I like this draw ability. You know what? I am totally for uh, including a Garrick Collar of Beasts, which can look at five, but only put creatures into your hand. But a Johnny looks at three and puts non-land permits. This gets your artifacts, your planeswalkers, your enchantments. Um, I think that we can definitely utilize the card draw on a Johnny. And uh, throw in the swords to plowshares when you need it. I'm in. Oath of a Johnny. Green-white. For an enchantment that says, When it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Planeswalker spells you cast cost one less to cast. Okay. This is an anthem that also ramps your planeswalkers. Hmm. Well, it's affecting creatures, but then it's also impacting your planeswalkers. I know that I can play a lot more reliable anthems for a little bit more than two mana. In fact, I don't even want to play this on two. What am I going to be buffing on two? And then also planeswalkers. How is this any better than just a mana rock? I don't think it is. Uh, it only gets better if you can cast two Planeswalkers in a turn. Otherwise, I would much rather have a Mana Rock. I mean, does this gain some advantage because it does both? Um, a Noble Hierarch is just better. It does everything. And, uh, I mean, Collective Effort has got to do more if we, even if we want the plus one, plus one counter sy synergy. Um, I mean, it kind of reminds me of a Johnny Steadfast where you can kind of impact the Planeswalkers and also put a counter on things you control. But I don't know. I'm definitely not in for Oath of a Johnny. Uh, there could be like a Planeswalker token deck out there with Elspeths um, and maybe Gideons where you're creating stuff, tokens, and then you're countering it up and then you're making your Planeswalkers cheaper. That seems like a lot of trouble to go through when there's just better cards out there. Winding Constrictor is a really solid snake. It's a 2-3 for 2, which is pretty good. But then also, if a counter would be placed on a creature, or if you were to get a counter, you get one more. So, it's like a Hardened Scales. Uh, but Hardened Scales is so limited, it's just plus one, plus one counters. Uh, Winding Constrictor can put other kinds of counters on artifacts, like charge counters, or creatures. Pretty great. Um, it can also affect your own counters. You can think energy if you're in Aether Revolt, but experience counters, ooh, like Mirren, you want to get those experience counters. Uh, but one really hilarious, and I don't know if you guys find this funny, but I find this funny. So this is a snake, right? Uh, and this snake is really good at doing this thing. Uh, but by the way, if it says if you would get one or more counters, you get that many plus one. So if you were to get a poison counter, this snake would give you one more. I I find that funny because the snake is like good with a lot of other stuff, but then it gives you the poison counter. Uh, I like that. And so if you go ahead and put an Icarats out, you can't choose not to. It says, if you would get one or more counters, you get one more. <laughs> so if you ever play this Winding Constrictor against an Infect deck, you're going to get destroyed. It's going to be very fun because... The snake's gonna be like, what? I'm a snake. Of course I'm gonna poison you. Dark Intimations. Two, blue, black, red. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, then discards a card. You return a creature or planeswalker card from your grave in your hand, then draw a card. And when you cast a bolus planeswalker spell, exile Dark Intimations from your graveyard. That planeswalker enters the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on it. This is doing all sorts of stuff. It's leading up to Amon Ket. We're going to get a new Bolas Planeswalker. And you know what? We already have one to mess around with. We have one Planeswalker Bolas. Okay, I can see how this is. This is definitely a lot of flavor, and it does a lot of things. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Cruel... I mean, it should remind you of Cruel Ultimatum. Uh, it's not as good. Sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, loses five life. You return a creature card, 
draw three cards, gain five life. These splashy spells are very fun. And all three of these are super splashy. And they remind me of the, the cruelty and the darkness of Nicol Bolas. And I'm so excited for Amonkhet for Nicol Bolas to come back and use his dragon wiles on everyone. That has been Jumbo Commander's analysis of Ether Revolt. I went pretty fast. I covered a lot of stuff. This video is long. I apologize for nothing. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it, found some cool ideas, a little bit of analysis. I'll talk to you in the comments. Bye.